<clears throat> All right, everybody ready? Look up here, and uh, what we're going to do is review yesterday's lesson. Now, since we did a uh, grid game on two different days, I probably won't review that right now, but if I'm going to walk you around today, I can help you with the grid game that's on your homework. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, these are the leftovers. Leftovers, ready? All right, leftover number one. God made it so that he wanted a little more variety, and we have elements... But then he said, some of these elements, I'm going to have them join with another element of the same kind, like O and O, and I'm going to form O2. And what do you call elements that have two of the same atoms joined together into a molecule? Diatomic. diatomic. See? Diatomic. Two atoms. Now, how do you know which elements are the diatomic elements on the planet? Mr. Review. All right, what do you got? What do you remember? Right, the elements that end in G-E-N, that's oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and the ones that end in ene, and they're all in the same column, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine. Everybody get that? Is that pretty easy? Now, you'll use that uh, late, later in the year. You'll have to know if uh, when I burn a piece of paper, it doesn't combine with O, it combines with O2. Well, I'm breathing right now, I'm breathing O2. Okay, got that? All right, um, that was pretty easy. Now, the next thing is, there's a word called allotropes. Remember that? And isotopes are the world of the nucleus of a single atom. You get that? Add some neutrons. You get an isotope. Take away some neutrons. You get an isotope of the same element, don't you? Every atom in the universe is an isotope of some element, isn't it? Is that right? Okay. But now, what about allotropes? That's a different thing. Allotropes are kind of like diatomic, isn't it? Except... The elements may not be diatomic. They might be diatomic and triatomic. And there's at least two or three kinds of sulfur. I didn't do it. And phosphorus. There's phosphorus 5, five phosphorus 2. Um, and in the book, it spends uh, most of his time talking about the allotropes of carbon, doesn't it? What's one allotrope of carbon? Max, you know, what's one of the allotropes of carbon? Um. It's pure carbon. One form of carbon is soot. soot, which would just be pretty much carbon. It might be C2 or C. Okay, next one. Another allotrope of carbon. Diamonds. Yes. Okay. Diamonds and another allotrope of carbon. John. Pencil lead called what? Graphite. Graphite. Okay. And one more. It's, um, it's called C60. And they named it after an architect who built geodesic homes, geodesic buildings. Now, um, you probably, I, I'm sure if I was your age, I would remember Buckminster Fullerene. You remember that? You did? Oh, okay. So Buckminster Fullerene is uh, like this one. And uh, it's a nanoparticle. It is a nanoparticle. But some scientists have actually figured out they can do things with this. Okay, that's kind of neat. So they're engineers. There might be chemical engineers that say, can we make these artificially? We know they occur naturally. Can we make them artificially? And what can I do with them? Why make them if you can't do anything with them? And some people, that's their job, is to figure out what can I do with this. Okay. Um, all right. So those are called allotropes. And then the last thing that was a review was, uh, let's go over here. Okay. Now, uh, everybody know where the metals are? All right. Everybody know where the metals are? Okay, so look at the periodic table, a little stair step here. Okay, now, include, put hydrogen over here. All these are called non-metals. And non-metals, except for these guys, these non-metals, they don't like to do anything with electrons, okay? So there's really only a little tiny group of non-metals. And what do they like to do in a chemical reaction? Do you like to gain electrons or do you like to lose them? You gotta remember this. You like to gain. Now, if you gain negative electrons, what kind of an ion are you going to become? I was neutral, and you gave me some extra electrons? I'm going to be a negative ion. What's that called? Anion. And what about metals? Let's look at metals. Metals are all these. Metals tend to do what in a chemical reaction? Lose electrons. Ready? I'm neutral, but I'm going to lose some of my negative things. What does that become then? Positive cation, a positive ion, uh, pal, oh, sorry, positive ion called a cation. Okay, now, 
even though we have a whole chapter of this, the author wants you to know a little bit of how these combine. So for example, um, let's take a look at this chart right here. And let's see if we can, it's pretty easy. Um, these metals actually will always lose one electron. They'll lose one negative electron to become plus one ions. You get that? So these are gonna be plus one. These are gonna be plus two. Now we jump over here and these will be plus three. Now we'll learn about these in another chapter because they can do all those things. They can sometimes one, sometimes two. Okay, we're not gonna learn, we're not gonna learn those right now. They're metals. But now, what about the non-metals? Well, these won't be involved. So these like to gain a negative electron, minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay, is that hard? Try it again. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Minus one, minus two, minus three. Can you remember that? Okay, and again, this is a minor, minor part of the test, isn't it? It's a minor part. Okay, so then I think I asked you um, questions. What would happen if sodium were to come in contact with chlorine? A metal who wants to gain, lose electrons, comes in contact and wants to gain. Do you think something might happen? Not always, but many times uh, by itself it will react and that's exactly what happened. Sodium will give away an electron and chlorine will rip it off anyway. And I'll become an ion, a plus ion. I'll become a minus ion. And we can't get away from each other because what kind of a bond holds ions together? Ionic. Oh, a bond between ions. That's right. What, are, what kind of a compound do you call this thing between a metal and non-metal ion? Ionic. Is that right? And what is this made of before I even put it in water? It starts with the ion. Ions. What happens when I put it in water? The ions separate, and then we have, what's that word? It's a solution that conducts electricity because it contains ions. We have an electrolyte. So salt water, put table salt in water, you have salt water. Will that conduct electricity? Yes, because of ions. Will pure water conduct electricity? No, because pure water is made of a non-metal and a non-metal, H2O, you get that? Now, non-metal, non-metal, I wanna gain, I wanna gain. Well, I, we're not gonna be forming an ionic bond here. <coughs> You're right. <clears throat> we'll have to do another kind of bond called a covalent bond. Now, covalent bonds, they're not made of ions. So if I put uh, uh, electricity through water, pure water, it's not gonna conduct electricity. And when you see in the movies where they somebody's in a bathtub and they kick a, a plug-in radio, do you have plug-in radios anymore? I guess we do. But they, they kick a plug-in radio in there or a hair dryer and something like that and they get electrocuted. That's because the bath water is coming from the tap. Tap water, there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. We even put stuff in there to keep you from getting cavities. So tap water is not pure water. And it does, it does have ions in it and it'll conduct electricity. What about sugar water? Well, I don't know what sugar is made of, I'll tell you. Sugar is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Is that gonna be an ionite compound or not? Non-metal, non-metal, non-metal. What do you think? No, not ionic. Sugar will dissolve in water, but there are no ions. So will sugar water conduct electricity? No, that's called a non-electrolyte. All right, let's go over here now. I'm going back to my story here. You said sodium uh, wants to be plus one and chlorine wants to be minus one. All compounds have to have a net charge of zero. How many sodiums would you need to combine with how many chlorines to equal zero? What do you think? John, you know. How many minus ones how many plus ones would have to combine with how many minus ones to equal zero? How many? What if I had one sodium and he became plus one and I had one um, chlorine and that was minus one. So if I had something like this, I had sodium plus one and I had a chlorine minus one. Could that that's going to be an ionic compound, but would I need to see one of those and one of those? Would that add up to zero or not? It does. That's why table salt is NaCl. Let's try another one. 
Let's uh, combine barium with fluorine. What do you think? What compound is going to exist between barium and chlorine? Here, let me find barium. Uh, well, there you are. Uh, not the plus one column. You're in the plus two column, yes? Okay, so if this guy forms a com uh, uh, an ion, it's going to be a plus two ion, isn't it? Okay, what about fluorine? What about that column? Everybody okay with me? No, you say minus one? Is that right? Okay, now. This is not going to work because it can't be a compound because compounds have a net charge of zero. This doesn't. So what am I going to do, Elizabeth? You know. Yes. And that's that's what the last two pages of the book are talking about. They show these little circles, you know. And so what's your final answer? B A F two, because a chemical formula always tells you how many of each atom there are in it. There's one barium, and there are two fluorines in it. And that's how we get to the next phase of chemistry in the next chapter. Okay, and again, probably the hardest one I could give you would be aluminum and oxygen. So let's take a look at this. Aluminum is in not the plus one, not the plus two, but he's in the plus three column, right? And oxygen, not the minus one, but the minus two. And so what we have is uh, how many plus threes can I combine with how many minus twos? And uh, the easiest way to do that is the smallest number they both go into is six. So give me uh, two of the plus threes and give me three of that. And if you were to draw it, um, did I draw it over here? No. If you drew it out there, that's what you'd see. You'd see, um, oh, here they are. Can everybody see that little drawing right there? So if you gave me two of those, that'd be plus six. And if you give me three of those, that'd be minus six. And that's why aluminum oxide is Al2. O three. Well, actually, believe it or not, that's that should be everything. That should be everything and reviewed. Um, I'm going to stop right now and stop the video.